Well, I think we're ready to go. So good day, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. What ID card printing technology is right for you? My name is Edwin Van Riesen, and I'm a senior marketing manager with Barcos Group. When printing ID badges on PVC cards, you have three technologies available to you. Direct to cart, retransfer, and inkjet. But how do you know what is the right method for you? This is the question we will be answering during the next 45 minutes. We will be reviewing each technology and provide examples that enable you to determine the fit for your organization. Now, since it's that time of the year, each solution shown has attractive doorbuster discounts through December 11th, and we will show you this at the end. For the interaction, there is a Q&A feature available on the webinar today please submit any questions that you have via that tool and we will address them at the end. Going through the details of the different ID card printing technologies is Mike Manns, Senior Product Marketing Manager for DTC printers within the Secure Issuance Division of HID Global. Mike manages the direct -to card printer portfolio, developing innovative solutions for key target market segments. He manages engineering roadmaps, but also leads voice of the customer projects to develop new products that fit the needs of the end user. Glad to have you join us today, Mike. Thank you, Edwin. Happy to be here. A quick note on Barcodes Group. Launched in 1994, Barcodes provides, integrates, and supports a solutions that focus on enterprise automation and workforce force mobility. We're a global company made up of business offering products, software, and services to enable clients to digitally capture and act on data related to their assets, people, transactions, and facilities. The two big components of barcodes are automatic data capture which focuses on the tracking data related to physical goods in applications like point of sale, warehousing, and supply chain. People identification as the second part relates to employee ID, student ID, membership ID, as well as access control, visitor and employee management. The latter is what we will focus on today. Now, if you're not familiar with the name Barcodes Group, you may recognize some of the brands in our People ID business, like ID Wholesaler, ID Zone, and Alpha Cart. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Mike Manns and have <clears throat> him take you through the different printing technologies. Take it away, Mike. Thank you very much, Edwin. Uh, welcome everybody to today's presentation. We're happy you're able to join us. Uh, take a couple minutes out of your day. And hopefully we'll give you some some great insight and information into how to make that next uh, next purchase in your, your ID badging solution within your printer environment. So without any further ado, I'll kind of walk you into uh, what, what it is we're talking about today in terms of hardware, some of the solutions, uh, <clears throat> and really what would make the best fit for your work environment. So really in today's landscape, there's a variety of print technologies available as Edwin, as Edwin had uh, highlighted earlier, and they all meet a specific set of customer needs. We're gonna walk you through three different print technologies offered through the various resellers in the barcode family. Uh, the inkjet based card printers, as well as the direct to card based card printers. And finally, some of the retransfer based card printers. <clears throat> and we'll walk through the technology behind them, some of the key benefits, and really where does this fit into your place? So from a high level, I wanna just kind of give you a, a basis of what is each technology and how does it work? So from an inkjet-based card printing solution, this is really the newest. HID released a new inkjet-based card printer this year, uh, just this fall, as a matter of fact. And it's very different in terms of how we traditionally based uh, our print technologies on PVC cards. <clears throat> That's the primary uh, card stock that is used in the, in the industry. Uh, so really here what you're seeing is it's a basic design of what we call drop on demand <clears throat> inkjet card printing. The, the cartridge itself is going to look very similar to what you would have in a home office environment uh, in potentially a, an HP or an Epson based card printer. Uh, <clears throat> and it uses uh, a, a very similar technology to make that ink drop onto the card. 
So each of these print cartridges uh, with us uh, holds all, uh, all three colors, the yellow, magenta, and the cyan, but it drops all of those colors in the same pass on the card itself. So <clears throat> creating some unique advantages uh, over print ribbon technologies. Direct to card printing <clears throat> is a little bit different. It utilizes a print ribbon as well as a print head. So they're two separate items. Whereas in the inkjet cartridge, uh, the print head is built right into that ink cartridge itself. So every time that you replace the print cartridge, you do, you do get a new print head. In a direct to card based printer environment, and the way this process works, that print head is fixed within the printer itself. When you need new consumables, you buy the new ribbon here that you call the ribbon supply spool and the ribbon take up spool. Those house the ribbon uh, and it feeds new ribbon panels under that print head and that ribbon is sandwiched between the print head coming down and the card beneath it. So as the, as the card and the print head uh, kind of make intimate contact with that ribbon, it applies a little bit of heat and pressure uh, and transfers dye from that ribbon onto the card surface. Uh, and we do that in a multitude of passes. So there's still a yellow panel, a magenta panel, a cyan panel, and typically a, a K panel, which is black. <clears throat> And in many cases, also an overlay protection panel uh, that gets applied final uh, on the card surface as well to increase the durability of it. <clears throat> so a very different process and how that works, but we're still applying each of those colors uh, in a unique way to get that, that image presented onto the card. And finally, we're gonna talk about retransfer printing. Uh, HID was a pioneer in the retransfer space. <clears throat> we call it our HDP technology for high definition printing. So it really gives you that really high quality photo-like uh, card printed surface, but still utilizing uh, a print ribbon technology. So what you can see here on the left-hand portion of this image, it's very similar to a direct -a card but instead of printing onto the card itself, we're actually printing onto what's called a transfer film. So we're gonna take that, that print head, the print ribbon and the transfer film, and we're gonna push that die from the print ribbon right onto a transfer film and that transfer film is brought down on top of the card and with a little bit of heat and pressure, it's then bonded to the top of that card surface. So creates an additional step uh, in how we process that. Uh, in, in reality, this technology is very, very challenging and complicated to perfect from a manufacturing perspective. And that's why it costs a little bit more upfront in the hardware space. It, it does have a few more moving components, uh, but it does provide some additional benefits uh, that we will outline in the coming slides also. So from a consumables perspective, so what do you need to make these printers physically work? Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's a little bit different in each, each variety. So on the far left side, obviously in the ink, uh, inkjet based uh, platforms, it's a very simple single ink cartridge. That ink cartridge is, again holds all, all the colors, the yellow, magenta, and the cyan. Uh, <clears throat> in the middle, you've got uh, direct to card based print platforms. We have two basic varieties here of how that ribbon is offered. Uh, and you'll see this in the different printers available uh, as you go through the DTC print families. Uh, up on the top, there's what we call like an easy to use uh, a print ribbon cartridge. This gets taken out and disposed of uh, with each use. So when the ribbon is expelled and completely used, that, that whole cartridge gets taken uh, replaced with another one. Below it, uh, these are more of a high yield print ribbon. So we have more images per ribbon uh, available because we don't have that cartridge as a constraint. So uh, on the top image there, the cartridge, you'll probably get around 250 images out of that cartridge. Uh, and the one below, you can get up to 750 images on a high yield ribbon by itself. So a little bit of a difference there, but uh, really, again, what is the, the key use in your environment? Is it uh, something that can, can easily be taken out and disposed of? Or are you looking for a little bit higher yield uh, which will also help present a, a little bit lower cost point for those cost per card uh, scenarios. And finally, on the right side, in the HDP free transfer world, uh, it does utilize two consumables. It, each time that you replace them, you will have a print ribbon as well as a transfer film. Now these both work hand in hand um, <clears throat> and, and you do need both of them to complete the process. So uh, one thing to keep in mind when you do see uh, as you start shopping uh, within the, uh, the barcode family of, of uh, resellers, you'll see that uh, there is different price points to print each technology. So uh, just something to keep in mind as, as we kind of walk through this and you'll start to understand, hey, you know, I've got, you know, one print ribbon versus two. I've got an ink 
cartridge versus a ribbon. Some of those things to help uh, give you a little bit of a background as to why there's differences uh, in how it prints uh, and as well as some of the price points. And really from your perspective, I think before we get going, there's, <clears throat> there's something that you uh, are probably looking for is what is your need? What can we help solve in your world in terms of creating a printer solution uh, for your for your work environment? And in most cases, not everybody has the same uh, important factors. Uh, if if card coverage is very important for you, if you want that whole card to be covered with the card image, uh, you know you've got HDP maybe your best solution. If cost per card is your is your uh, best uh, or leading leading factor in how you're going to purchase these printers, uh, you know, potentially Ink 1000 would be a good solution for you. And in the middle, direct to card side, uh, really that has a lot of strong advantages in in terms of durability. Hardware cost uh, is, is also very advantageous. So there's a variety of reasons you may buy one platform versus the other, and we'll walk the advantages of each printer uh, in the coming slides. So I want to start out with the Ink 1000 and really give you kind of a nice quick little video uh, display of, of what the printer physically looks like, how it works, and some of the cards that you could see printed out of a printer like this. So let's take a quick look. So you got a little bit of an idea as to what what does that uh, that printer look like, kind of the physical space that it takes up, how does it work, uh, some of those key components there. So as we walk into it, <clears throat> I want to give you just kind of a, a nice little description here. So we've got, uh, it's very simplistic in its operation. One of the key benefits to the Ink 1000 is its simplicity, familiarity in, in most people's everyday life. Does a printer like this, um, incorporated into their workspace naturally uh, with minimal training? Absolutely. So it's very, very easy to use in terms of how the printer is laid out, uh, how that card processing works. Uh, and as you can see here, <clears throat> it's a very simple uh, single button for on and off. Uh, it does have some indicator lights to tell you, is the ink out? Are you out of cards? Is there some type of an issue inside the printer? Uh, we do have some nice indicator lights on there to guide you in that direction. Uh, there's an easy to use input hopper door. So you pop that door open, plop in another set of cards. So you can start printing some more. Uh, a slide door on top that will provide access to that ink cartridge itself. Very similar to your, your home based office or home office based paper print. Open the lid, pop in another cartridge uh, and you're off to the races. Uh, again, very simplistic, very straightforward. And that's really some of the key benefits to a printer like this. <clears throat> it prints exceptionally well on a variety of cards. Uh, and there's no specific card stock that is required when you purchase this. So it's not as though you've got to purchase an inkjet printer uh, and have a specific consumable dedicated to that printer uh, that may be uh, a different price point from what you're, what you're using today if you're already doing card printing. Um, and this is one of the big technological advancements in the card printer space. There's been a few attempts to do inkjet based card printing in the past and really the big challenge is getting an ink to bite into a traditional PVC card surface. Um, this was probably you know, five years of development within our engineering team to create an ink and a hardware solution combination that would allow this to bite into the card. So it's, it's a really unique technology that it makes this uh, function the way it does. I know from a, from a customer's perspective or from a high level, it just looks like an ink cartridge I would buy uh, at Best Buy for, for any of my printers, it's not quite that way. It's a very specialized, very specifically designed ink 
to bite into a PVC card surface. So <clears throat> something a little bit unique um, and, and, and hopefully it does come off is very uh, familiar for, for you and for your employees, if this is something that would work for you. But that said, we do believe it is the easiest to use printer technology on the market today. It is extremely straightforward and simple in its use and its operation, <clears throat> and it provides some full card coverage, uh, which isn't traditionally available in a direct-to-card based printer. So the cards you'll see here in, in the example, uh, the yellow card, for example, it has full printing edge to edge. And when we say that uh, on a direct-to-card printer, uh, historically, the way that process works, you're gonna have just a tiny little white border on, on on, in this card example, on the left side of the card as well as on the right side of the card. And that's because in a DTC print world, you're trying to minimize the, the likelihood that that print head is gonna make contact with the edge of that card and damage that print head. Those print, he print heads uh, can be damaged. Obviously it's not as simple as replacing a, a, an ink cartridge as we can in the Ink 1000 world. And so Ink 1000 doesn't make that contact like that and risk damaging that, that print head and we're able to print right up to and over that edge. So it gives you that really full color, full printed surface. Uh, and it does print exceptionally well on technology cards uh, that does have, does have, do contain internal antennas. So if you're using uh, physical access control with uh, you know, contactless badges, uh, these print beautifully on those cards. Um, we do offer uh, internal technology contactless encoding solution uh, also with this printer. Um, but it, and it is compatible with um, uh, the most popular size card on the market. So the CR80 sized card in the 30 mil thickness. Obviously, uh, this is the first release of this inkjet based printer. So this is uh, a little bit more of a, a focused uh, release that will include obviously this, uh, this single size and thickness of card. Um, but we believe it will address uh, the majority of customers needs uh, and shouldn't really cause any challenges there. Um, and finally, it's probably the most intuitive to use. <clears throat> so if there was ever a card jam or a, an issue within the, the print ink cartridge itself, uh, I believe that anybody with minimal to no training uh, can get themselves out of a challenging situation and back to printing cards uh, without too much issue. So uh, really trying to enhance that user experience, minimize training time required, uh, and provide that strong benefit to partners that may have uh, these using at their being used at their front desk. For example, if they've got you know a, a variety of employees that may sit at that front desk, uh, there really is minimal training required to get them up and running uh, without too much challenge. So, uh, with that, we'll roll into the direct to card family of printers, and we'll show some some nice footage of the DTC 1500 XE printer uh, in the following video. So I gave you a little bit of a look and feel for what does a printer like this look like, some of the physical space it may take up and some of the benefits that it provides to uh, a customer in different environments. <clears throat> so let's take a comparative look at this printer and kind of give you a little bit of an idea. So in terms of uh, where the, the, the removables go, uh, in the Ink 1000 printer, you had that slidable top cover. This one does have a ribbon drawer. You pull the ribbon drawer open, you drop out that high capacity ribbon, place in a new one, and you're back up and running. Uh, very similar in terms of the input hopper. Uh, we do, a, do have a 100 card input hopper, uh, but this will have a two button console itself. So we do have a, a power on and off button, as well as two indicator lights that will provide you an opportunity to uh, 
do some error management through there if anything were to jam up inside the printer or something were to happen. Uh, very simple and easy to use in terms of how does this printer function. Cards in on the right, print ribbon in the middle, they exit on the left. Uh, very straightforward. <clears throat> this printer does offer a variety of options uh, and we'll highlight those in the next slide. So from a DTC printing benefit, this does uh, incorporate a full suite of options in the DTC 1500 printer. So uh, if a customer wants to do both sides of the card, uh, if you want to print on both sides of the card, personalized information, uh, you can certainly do that with this printer. The Ink 1000 at this point today, it is only a single side printer. So this is kind of the next step if you'd like to print on both sides of the card. Maybe you want to look at the DTC 1500 XE. You can print those both sides of the card with one step. You don't have to manually intervene, intervene uh, and flip the card over, do any of that. There's a flipper built right into the printer itself. <clears throat> this printer can perform contact, contactless, and mag stripe encoding. So again, if you have uh, physical access control in your work environment, maybe you have cashless vending, uh, any of those needs uh, can, be, can allow that credential to be personalized uh, and, and activated within the printer. So if you're printing on your cards today, taking them out, bringing them over to an encoding station uh, and activating that mag stripe, activating that contact chip, that can all be done inside the printer now. You can fully personalize and activate those credentials inside the printer. So really minimizing the, the effort involved in terms of how that credential gets activated, as well as minimizing the error chances uh, of somebody either entering a number in incorrectly if they're manually typing it, any of those activities really get streamlined uh, with, with a suite of benefits like their suite of uh, options like that. Uh, this printer does come standard with some security features such as watermark. Uh, you can purchase some fluorescing ribbons if you'd like to have uh, a, a, an image printed within the card that's only a, a visible under UV light, as well as over laminates. If you want to laminate the top of that card surface uh, with a, a laminate patch to give it an increased lifespan, that's certainly something that's possible with this printer. Uh, those features are available as upgrades. Um, <clears throat> and you can even add a custom holographic over laminate. If you really have a high security requirement uh, and you wanna make sure that, that your cards are, are uh, very protected from counterfeit uh, production, uh, custom holographic over laminates is a great solution. Uh, and those are also available within a, a printer platform like this. Uh, the DTC platform can also utilize rewrite cards for temporary and reusable needs. So uh, if you have a, a case where you may only want to use a card for a couple hours and you don't want it to be color uh, and really you just want to be able to use the cards over and over again, you can purchase rewritable cards. Uh, in that case, it doesn't even use a print ribbon. It just uses the print head, prints a black image on top of the card. That image can then be erased within the printer. Uh, and you can place a new image on top of it <clears throat> for another use uh, and over and over again. So uh, DTC does have that opportunity. That's a little bit unique in terms of the various print technologies. Uh, neither the Ink 1000 or the HDP 6600 XE will allow you to print on rewritable cards. And, and again, the DTC platform does offer a little bit wider compatibility in terms of the cards itself. We do allow compatibility with both a CR79 size card as well as a CR80. So that's the physical uh, footprint of that card itself. Uh, and we do allow for a little bit uh, greater variation in the thickness. So a, a 20 mil thick card up to a 40 mil thick card. A little bit, we go a little bit thinner on this one and a little bit thicker than the Ink 1000. So um, if you've got a specific card stock you wanna use, uh, maybe it doesn't fit into that exact CR80 uh, 30 mil card size that the Ink 1000 requires, perhaps you wanna look at a DTC platform. And finally, we're gonna talk about the HDP 6600 platform uh, and some of the benefits that it offers. <clears throat> and again, this, uh, this new HDP 6600 printer, it's available exclusively through the barcode family of resellers. Uh, and let's show you a little bit of video here on how does this printer work and, and what, uh, what opportunities does it provide for your work environment?
So hopefully that gave you a little bit of a visual idea of what does this printer look like, some of the cards that it can produce, <clears throat> and some of the benefits of it. One thing I wanted to highlight is if you've done any printing with a retransfer printer in the past, you'll know one of the biggest differences in retransfer printing historically versus direct-to-card printing and now inkjet printing is the time it takes to get that first card out and sometimes the delay between multiple cards in a batch. The way that process works, as I spoke about earlier, you're printing that image onto a transfer film and then it basically gets bonded to a card surface at the very end of that process. That bonding to a card surface requires a heater. So there's a, a little bit of heat and pressure that, that sandwiches that image onto that card surface. That heater historically has taken anywhere from two to four minutes to heat up and get to a stable temperature. The big differentiator with the HTP 6600XE is that this printer heats up in under a minute, many times 45 seconds or less. So you're minimizing that, that extra delay every time you want to print a card. This is a true game changer in terms of your user interaction with this printer. You're not waiting every time you want to print a card to get that printer heated up, stabilized, and ready to go. And so really something to keep note of if you're looking in the retransfer space, uh, what's going to differentiate this printer versus any of the other retransfer printers. So I wanted to highlight again here some of the, the, the key kind of touch points within the printer itself. This printer does have a display uh, with some, some, again, some status indicator lights uh, and menu selecting buttons. So you can navigate through a menu. Uh, it can give you IP addresses, some of the, the functions and settings within the printer itself. You can navigate that through that front display. Again, a 100 card input hopper, uh, very simple to use. The ribbon drawer itself, <clears throat> similar to the DTC side, this drawer actually opens and there's a tray that comes out with both the print ribbon and that transfer film. So when you go to replace the consumables, they're right there and presented in front of you. Very easy to replace, very easy to access. This one does have a power switch. Uh, we've, you'd be surprised how many customers would like to have a power switch on their printer and some of the historical versions uh, did not. So this is something to note. Um, <clears throat> the, the unit in this example does have a flipper. So if you wanna print on both sides of the card, um, certainly capable to do that if you purchase it with the flipper module itself. Uh, and then finally on the far left, you do have that output tray. So the cards very similar to the DTC, enter on the right in the raw card stock, go through the print process, eject on the left. Um, very simplistic in how the printer functions from a, from a high level and from a user interaction perspective. Some of the benefits that retransfer printing offers in the ribbon-based printer world, 300 DPI was the standard for 20 years, very long time. Still produced a very high quality image for 300 DPI. And I think today we're, we're so accustomed to this very high resolution in, in our, our TVs, our monitors, our cameras. And you think 300 DPI sounds pretty rough. You know, you, you wouldn't envision this, these cards to look as nice as they do. But in a print ribbon world, 300 DPI creates a very high quality image. Uh, and really only in the last several years, has that resolution been increased even to 600 DPI? So uh, this, this HTP 6600, this does offer 600 DPI print resolution. Uh, so it's very high in terms of uh, ribbon-based printer uh, resolution. Again, if you have cards that you use for access control, cashless vending, uh, any of those uh, variety of multi-use multi cards, uh, we can perform all those contact and, and contactless mag encoding, all those encoding technologies and, and steps can be performed within the printer. So no additional steps required there. Uh, the, the retransfer side does offer inherently uh, a greater level of durability to the card surface, even over a DTC printer. So I guess if, if durability is your main concern, you know, I would, I would say Ink 1000 is a great basis. DTC is a little bit more durable. HTP is a little bit more durable yet. So it's kind of that ladder of, of technology that you climb for some of those uh, variety of benefits, depending on what's important to you. So if, if durability is the, the most important aspect, HTP printing is going to give you a very strong solution there. Uh, and you can also increase that durability with lamination, similar to the uh, DTC 1500 XE. So you can increase that, la that, that uh, card life with a laminator option. Uh, and again, you can also include uh, custom holographic over laminates if that's something that you would choose to do in your print environment uh, to increase that security level uh, within that credential. 
Uh, similar to the Ink 1000, this does have a full card coverage print capability. So it's going to print that full card surface uh, with your printed image, give you a really nice, beautiful, uh, completed product. And this one has some of the widest array of security features available uh, in terms of the printer itself with uh, the ability to print really small text, uh, holographic over laminates, uh, and give you some of those unique features uh, that really increase the security of those credentials um, that's, that's probably not available on some of the, the lower price point models. Uh, again, if this is something that's important in your work environment. So um, I know I, I shared a lot of information. Hopefully it wasn't too overwhelming for, for everybody in the audience today. Uh, but, but again, uh, I think this gives you a good high level overview of really what do all these printers look like? What do they function like? Uh, what does it mean? You know, some of the basic terminology, DTC, HDP, what does that mean? Uh, now you know, it's direct to card printing. HDP is high definition printing. It's a, a style of retransfer printing. And uh, and hopefully we've shared some, some good features and benefits that can help guide you down the path uh, of what would make the best print solution in your work environment. So uh, with that, I'll let uh, Edwin highlight some of the, the amazing opportunities to uh, to purchase some new hardware. Uh, within the barcode family. Well, thanks, Mike, for this insightful presentation. This, I, I learned a lot, and I hope the audience did as well. There's uh, quite a few questions came in, and uh, we'll get to those in, in just a minute. But for those of you who are in the market for a new printer, th this may be the time to take the next step because all three printers Mike reviewed are part of our door busters promotion through the end of the week with, with prices reduced by either $250 or $500. So this, uh, we, we don't offer these printers at those prices ever. So uh, if you are interested, uh, definitely uh, you know, have some questions or, or take the next step. Uh, this is the time to do it. And lastly, before we get to the questions, the, the DTC 1500XE, the Inc. 1000 and the HDP 6600XE are available at any of these authorized resellers. So please reach out to your account representative at your preferred uh, reseller or contact one of uh, our authorized resellers to, to further discuss your situation solution. So with that, um, let's turn to the questions that have come in. Uh, with me, uh, we also have Marcella Vera from HID Global. And maybe Marcella, can you uh, pass on to Mike the first question that came in? Sure, Edwin, thank you. Uh, great presentation, Mike. So for the first question about the HDP, do you have to change both uh, ribbons, color and clear at the same time? Great question. <clears throat> so it's 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 a variety. The answer isn't as straightforward as I'd like it to be. The reason that uh, we don't always have to change them both at the same time really depends on what the print ribbon you are utilizing uh, contains for for a panel count. So in some cases we'll have uh, uh, say a YMC KK ribbon. So you have YMC and black to print on the front of the card, and an additional K panel to print on the back of the card. In that case, you know, we may have 500 images that you're able to print on that um, uh, ribbon panel, a ribbon itself. On the, on the transfer film, we'll likely have 750 images available uh, to, to utilize within that ribbon. So we're trying to maximize the yield out of a ribbon to help minimize your investment cost on, on each component. But they don't always line up perfectly. So depending on the print ribbon that you have, you may be printing both sides of the card um, and, and you may go through a, a print ribbon and a transfer film at the same time. Other times they may not be quite as aligned uh, and it really does depend on, on what that ribbon that you choose and what your print requirements are. If you wanna print on both sides of the card, uh, that really helps to uh, change when you need to replace either one of those consumables. Great. I have one and I'll combine two questions and maybe you can address basically the printing on, you know, maybe call it an, a 
a card that has some technology on it. It's, it could be a, a blank proximity type card that you really, really <clears throat> want to be careful with that you don't damage, of course, the, the electronics in the card. Uh, another question came in with printing and programming SIM cards. So a SIM card has a cutout around the SIM. What technology will, will not damage the print ad? Could you address either, you know, both questions or, or one at a time uh, sure. if somebody has a concern related to this? Yeah, <clears throat> so technology cards are obviously very prevalent in our environments today. Uh, and I think they're gonna continue to grow in adoption and, and requirements really within, especially given the, the pandemic uh, that we're facing right now, you're trying to track uh, your, your employees, your visitors, uh, maybe some assets uh, that utilize some of these cards as well. So that's a great question. Uh, in terms of printing onto a card that has technology within it, um, any of these technologies will provide protection in terms of uh, you, there really is no risk to damage the internal electronics within the card itself. Um, so that's something that, you know, obviously for a peace of mind perspective, uh, there is no risk of damaging the card from each any print technology. But uh, there's a variety of benefits to each technology. And, and I'll kind of start with the Ink 1000 side. Ink 1000, as of today, we offer contactless encoding. So if you want to uh, encode a mag stripe onto that card, uh, we can't do that within the printer process today. Uh, we just haven't developed that, that fully capability within the printer. Uh, so if you want to encode mag stripe as well as a technology or, or even mag stripe alone, uh, and you want to do that within the printer, that's already going to steer you into direct to card or retransfer. In the direct to card space, uh, we allow people, we have the options to do contacts, contact uh, encoding within the printer. I will say, given the nature of the print head and how that process works, <clears throat> you may end up with a slightly bigger perimeter around a contact chip, for example. Uh, you may have a little bit of a white space around that contact chip because we really want to protect that print head from any damage. And so we're not trying to apply anything there. Uh, again, there's always a risk. Uh, in printing contact chip cards within a DTC printer, because uh, again, we can't control the market on who, who manufactures the cards and, and the quality and, and some of the, the challenges that they all face in making those cards. So if there's ever uh, a contact chip card where the, the contact station of the chip is elevated above the card surface, uh, you certainly have that risk of damaging the printhead or excuse, yeah, damaging the printhead. Um, but I will say we have thousands of these printers around the world uh, that utilize contact encoding within the printer. Uh, and and it's, not a, it's not as common as you may be believing, uh, but, it, but it can happen. So it's certainly something to take into consideration if you're doing contact chip encoding. Uh, if contact chip is, is your uh, primary source of technology, uh, we really want to encourage you to look at retransfer printing because you don't have that risk of damaging the print head. Again, by the way of, of how we apply that image to the, to the card. Uh, and also in that environment, uh, we're able to print uh, right or basically try and bond that image right over that technology chip. Uh, and we're getting a very close border around that chip, much closer than we would get on a direct card side. So you're going to get maybe a little bit better finished product uh, in terms of how that card is going to look with that uh, contact chip. Um, so that's kind of my, my direction in terms of if finally, if you're looking at contactless, any of the printers can print and encode contactless. Uh, the one thing to look for if you're going to look at a direct card style, style printer with contactless encoding, uh, you may want to be a little bit more uh, aware of designing your card layout and your card imagery around where that contact chip is. Again, one of the, the challenges when creating the card stock itself is creating a perfectly flat surface uh, above that contact chip that's embedded or a contactless chip that's embedded inside the card. Uh, many times it leads to a little surface irregularity. So there's kind of a divot where that contact chip is. And in a direct-to-card printing uh, environment, you may have a little bit of a white space where the, the print ribbon doesn't effectively transfer that die into that little divot quite as well. So something to keep in mind, uh, it certainly has all the technology available to encode those cards, to print those cards. Uh, but if you don't design your background perfectly around that contact chip or contactless chip, uh, you know you may run into some some print quality challenges that you may not foresee uh, if you don't if you don't design around that. 
Uh, next question, Mike, will be about the Ink 1000. Uh, so does the printer print double-sided cards? As of today, no. Uh, so the, the offering today, the Ink 1000, it is just a single side card printer. Um, you know, in some environments, I've heard of some customers taking that, that card that was printed on one side, take it out uh, and flip it over and print it again on the other side. Again, that's something that we don't, uh, we don't have a lot of data to prove that that's going to work effectively. Uh, I, I can't tell you what, what to do or what not to do. Uh, certainly, if it, if it works for you, uh, by all means, go ahead and do it. Um, you know, there's, there's really no risk of damaging anything within the printer, uh, but it's, it's just, we don't have a flipper incorporated into the printer itself today. Uh, that will be available in some future iterations, but that's gonna be, uh, you know, sometime down the road. Great, and um, another one comes in related to software. So can you talk a little bit about the software? Is the software interface the same for all printers or what is different about it? Yeah, <clears throat> that's a great question. And, and in our world, in terms of the printer side, our printers, in terms of your card personalization and, and uh, programming software, we're really uh, an endpoint. We're a, we're a peripheral in the system. You can use the software, uh, the same software with any of these printers that you've, you've seen today. Uh, there's no special requirements. There's no special um, file types that need to be sent to the printer. That all gets managed uh, within the standard uh, card personalization softwares uh, available today, and, and especially the stuff that ID Wholesaler, Alpha Card, and ID Zone uh, will have available for you. And Mike, will all of these printers work with S2 badge software? I'm not familiar with that software, but uh, I, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Uh, really, all of, our, all of our printers, as well as competitive printers on the market today, uh, we don't have any special needs in terms of how that data is presented to the printer. So uh, none of the none of the printers are going to require anything specific. They each have their own printer driver, of course, uh, which gets installed onto your onto your PC. But uh, outside of that, there's there's really no difference. No. Very good. Well, with that, I think we reached the end of our webinar and I want to thank Mike Mance for really giving us this wonderful overview of these three different technologies. And if there's something that you might want to review, um, I want to let you know, audience, that you will be receiving a link to the recording over the next day or two. So look out for that. And in the meantime, have a wonderful holiday season. Thank you very much for your attendance and talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.